Question is from Zebo 57 Do tight muscles and or a lack of mobility impede gains? Totally. It can. Yeah. I, told, I tell you what, there's two, two ways. Here's the first one. It's easy. This is an easy way to understand. If your lack of mobility or your tightness is preventing you from doing the best exercises, for sure. Yeah. That's going to prevent gains. Or right? even full range of motion. That's the yeah. other one. That's yeah. the other one right there. Yeah. If you can't, if you're not able to go, I mean, uh, again, this is personal from personal story for me, but like, uh, my my legs, when I got to the place where I could squat all the way down, I don't have to do nowhere near the load to get the size on my legs because I'm taking the legs through its fullest range of motion now in comparison to where it was just three years ago. So, yeah, and which is it's kind of to me when you think about it, it's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. You know, would be would using half the muscle give you the most amount of gains, or using all of your muscle like the forward? Which I know, and I know somebody hears that and goes like, "You use all of your muscle even when you go yeah, yeah. short." <laughs> right? Yeah. So I know there's some fucking idiot out there right now that just heard that and was just like, "Oh, you use all your muscle yeah. no matter what." No, wait, well, wait. I just I remember working with one of the models for like doing our maps programs and stuff, and like not being able to get you know their their elbow in a certain position and then get it to lock out completely, like a you know, and not and not fully developing their triceps. Like their triceps were substantially, you know, smaller in comparison than the biceps. And it's just like one of those frustration things for them. Whereas like if they just worked on the mobility of it and regained that, you know, strength and range of motion, like that would have unlocked all new like levels for them. Yeah, totally. I mean, okay. So, so they have been studied. So first off, bodybuilders have been saying this for years, for decades, that full range of motion, full reps are better for muscle growth. Personal trainers have observed this also for for forever. I observed this over two decades of training clients. If I could get my clients to do a full curl versus a half curl or mm -hmm. a full press versus a half press or a full row versus a half row, they just got better, better results. They got better results overall, better muscle development, and then indirectly better fat loss because they were able to build uh, more muscle. So that's number one. But number two, the studies actually support this. When studies compare full range of motion to partial range of motion in terms of muscle gains, all the studies, uh, they slant towards the fact that full range of motion is superior. So if you're so tight or you're tight and your lack of mobility prevents you from really utilizing what you can do with your full range of motion, what's possible with the full range of motion, you're not getting the best uh, gains through your workouts. This is why I always make the case for mobility training for bodybuilders or for people who are just don't even care about mobility. It's like that's fine if you don't if you don't want to have better mobility, that's okay. But work on your mobility because it's going to make all your other exercises way, way, way. And it's going to give them longevity too. Yeah, and, and not to mention right now, maybe when you're young, like tight muscles are just tight muscles for you. But as you get older, tight muscles turns into chronic pain. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, tight being tight and wound up at 40, 50 plus yeah. ends up being elbow pain, <clears throat> shoulder pain, hip pain, knee pain. So you may get away with being tight in your 20s and maybe early 30s, but as you start to age, if you don't address all those overactive or tight muscles, uh, you soon will be told by your body yeah. that you need to. So here, even if it's not just about gains as far as building muscle, you know, eventually the chronic pain follows here, that. Here's some anecdote. Uh, prob this was probably in my late teens. I remember I started working out when I was 14. One of my body part, one of my focuses was my shoulders. I, I have narrow bone structure, and I wanted – big round shoulders to offset that a little bit. And so I did some a lot of the exercises that I read in like Arnold Schwarzenegger's bodybuilding, uh, uh, Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding and all this other stuff. But I remember at the time, the bodybuilding magazines uh, of the time were showing a lot of behind the neck presses. It was really popular back then. All the bodybuilders were doing behind the neck presses. I didn't have the shoulder stability or mobility to do it. So I just avoided doing them. And especially when I got certified as a trainer, I remember the first certification I took, they yeah. said, it's a bad exercise. Right. Well, anyway, at some point, I don't know what convinced me, but I said, you know what? I'm going to get good at behind the neck presses. Forget what the certification says. I see people doing them. They seem to be fine. So I, I started practicing them. I started working on getting better at doing them. And as, at some point, my mobility got good enough to where I could make it a part of my routine. And guess what happened? Yeah. My shoulders got bigger. Yeah, I got up. Yeah, I got better gains because I'm now doing an exercise I couldn't do before, but I had to work on the mobility first.